multiple sclerosis is a lifelong disease in which people lose their ability to walk, see, think clearly and speak. There are often episodes or acute attacks in between gradual loss of ability to move so people are eventually confined to a wheelchair or bed for the rest of their life. Dr. Roy Swank conducted a study of multiple sclerosis patients over 40 years ago. He found that the progression of the disease was greatly reduced by low saturated fat diet, that is, a diet excluding animal-based food. This worked even with people who had advanced stage of the disease. About 95% remain only mildly disabled for approximately 30 years and only 5% of these patients died of multiple sclerosis. In contrast, 80% of the patients with early stage multiple sclerosis who consumed a diet high in saturated fats, that is an animal-based diet, died of multiple sclerosis. Most autoimmune diseases are significantly more common in colder climates. The further people live from the equator, the higher the incidence of multiple sclerosis and the other autoimmune diseases. This geographical localization is linked to the reduced sunlight needed to form vitamin D in the skin, as well as the high animal-based food consumed. More milk and other dairy products are consumed at the higher latitudes. The conversion of vitamin D made in the skin in response to sunlight into the crucially important active vitamin D is inhibited by foods that are high in calcium as well as by acid producing animal proteins. This supercharged vitamin D not only stops cells from becoming sick, it also helps to repress the development of autoimmune diseases. There is a multitude of other autoimmune diseases. The mechanism for their causation is similar to multiple sclerosis. They include dementia, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, diseases affecting the eyes, the thyroid gland, joints resulting in rheumatoid arthritis, muscles, and just about every tissue in the body can be the target of the immune system going awry and resulting in one of the 40 autoimmune conditions. Animal protein, especially milk and other dairy products, cause osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a disease in which the body takes calcium from its bones. This leaves the bones thinner and more fragile. The resulting weakness leads to bone fractures. In fact, hip fractures are often used as a reliable indicator of the severity of osteoporosis. This bone disease affects women more frequently than men, especially after menopause. Countries that consume cow's milk and its products also have the highest fracture rates and the worst bone health. If milk is so good for our bones, as we are led to believe, then people who consume milk should have better, stronger and healthier bone structure than others who do not drink as much milk or eat dairy products. The fact is, this is not so. Studies have shown that American women aged 50 years and older have one of the highest rates of hip fractures in the world. The rates of bone fracture are exceeded only in Europe, Australia and New Zealand where the milk consumption is even higher. Researchers at Yale University School of Medicine summarized information on osteoporosis taken from 34 separate surveys in 16 countries that were published in 29 peer-reviewed research publications. The study found that 70% of the bone fracture rate was related to the consumption of animal protein. The reason for this is that animal protein is acidic. The body does not like an acidic environment and begins to neutralize it as soon as possible. 
To do this, the body uses calcium present in the bloodstream. If not enough calcium is present in the blood, more is taken from bones. This loss results in bone thinning and eventually leads to bone fractures. It has been well known as early as 1880 that animal protein causes excess metabolic acid. Unlike plant protein, which does not cause this acidity in the body, when animal protein consumption is increased from 35 grams to 78 grams per day, the loss of calcium through the kidneys increases by 53%. This 53% increase of calcium of leaving our body is not only disastrous to bone, but also increases the incidence of stones forming in the kidneys and of course stresses the kidneys by forcing them to get rid of all this calcium. Anyone who cares for the welfare of others and their own health needs to look squarely and rationally at this avalanche of evidence. Even if they are a farmer or work for the industry that processes and supplies these products to their fellow human beings at large. Dr. Greger is a physician with a degree in agriculture. He is also the director of public health and animal agriculture at the Humane Society of the United States. Now, the reason we're told to drink milk is for strong bones. At least that's what the advertising campaigns would have us believe. But over and over, in fact, the latest review was in a journal called the Osteoporosis International, October 2004, which was a meta-analysis, reviewed kind of all the studies done to date, and found, this was done by the World Health Organization, found that low milk drinking was not at all a risk factor for osteoporotic fractures, for breaking a hip or breaking a forearm later in life. So one certainly doesn't need to eat or drink dairy for their calcium. The best absorbed calcium on the planet really is dark green leafy vegetables, these low oxalate dark green leafy vegetables like kale, collards, bok choy, etc. These are loaded with calcium and are absorbed even more than milk and instead of getting the saturated fat and the cholesterol and the potential for growth hormones and antibiotics in the dairy milk, by getting your calcium from plant sources, not the kind of baggage you get then is the fiber and the folate and all the wonderful phytonutrients, these anti-aging, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory compounds found exclusively in the plant kingdom. In 2000, the Department of Medicine at the University of California, San Francisco published a summary of 87 separate surveys which showed that high intake of vegetables and low intake of animal protein resulted in virtual disappearance of bone fractures. Another study followed 1,000 women for over seven years. Women with the highest animal to plant protein content in their diet had 3.7 times more bone fractures than women with the lowest ratio. The women on an animal protein diet also lost bone four times faster than women on plant protein. Taking extra calcium is an accepted and well-established practice recommended for people who have osteoporosis or are at risk of developing it. Professor Mark Hegstead at Harvard University commenced studies on calcium in the 1950s. He showed that excessively high intakes of calcium over a long time impaired the body's ability to control how much calcium it uses and when. Our body is a perfectly balanced system. Into this perfect system we introduce additional factors and the system copes and copes and copes and copes until it cannot cope any longer. Continuous abuse leads to inability of our body to control the finely tuned mechanisms. This is a well-established phenomenon in biology. If a little is good, more must be better, is the way our minds tend to think. 
Taking excess calcium in the form of dairy food or calcium supplements has been found to destroy the body's finely tuned ability to regulate calcium. This disruption of the regulation of calcium absorption, retention and use for bone maintenance can be temporary or permanent. Instead of concerning ourselves with calcium and supplements, what these women need to do is to go off of animal protein. Because animal protein, in fact, is creating the condition that leads to calcium loss. Nature demonstrates the solution to the best calcium, protein and iron intake. The largest animals in the world have large skeletons and muscle structures to uphold. What do they eat? Exclusively plants and grasses. We do not have to eat animals to get what they get by eating greenery. Some of the recommendations that are being made in some countries for the amount of calcium intake, you'll see that these levels are quite high in leading one to believe that we can't get enough calcium by consuming plant-based foods. Well, my point is if one goes back and looks at the development of those policies and those setting those standards, um, my view is that we don't need to set those standards so high. And unfortunately, the bodies that have been involved in setting these standards have been greatly influenced by the dairy industry. A similar situation of excess holds true for iron. And so we have to think a little bit of it, rethink our, our recommendations on iron again and ask whether or not we can get adequate amounts of iron, let's say from plants. And the, the answer is definitely yes. The ability of the body to monitor its own needs needs to be respected and protected in the form of giving it the right kind of uh, resources to work with. These are not the only problems resulting from drinking milk, eating other dairy and animal-based products. The so-called milk replacer, right? The calves can't drink milk. That's our milk. It belongs on the shelves, right? But so what do we give the calves? The calves get milk replacer, which too often contains spray-dried cattle blood as a protein-rich component. We continue to feed cattle tissues in the form of cattle blood to calves in this country. We're the only country on the planet with mad cow disease that allows these kind of quasi-cannibalistic practices to continue. And we know blood is infectious. We have um, people, two people over in Europe that seem to have gotten the human form of mad cow disease not by eating meat, but by getting a blood transfusion from someone who did eat infected tissue. We kill animals. We eat them. Those animals are killing us. Noam Moore is a physicist with degrees from Yale and Pennsylvania University. He has worked on global warming campaigns for the United States Public Interest Research Group for which he published several reports on climate change and fuel economy standards. A recent study found that we will deplete the oceans of all the commonly eaten species of fish in the next few decades. You can see from space the lines made in the ocean by ships who are dragging behind them huge nets. People think of the ocean as just so vast that we could never have a big effect on it. But just like we have a huge effect on climate with our emissions, we're having a huge effect on the oceans by our vast appetite for seafood. Most people have come to believe that eating fish is healthy. That fish contain omega-3 oil that is good for the heart. A closer look at the scientific literature reveals a different story. A large, long-term study by Michael Burr and colleagues from the University of Wales College of Medicine, Cardiff, reported that men with chest pain caused by heart disease had a higher risk of heart attack when they took fish oil capsules. Fish and seafood contain significant amounts of fat, including cholesterol. Prawns have two times the amount of cholesterol found.